Hobart School of Welding Technology presents Training in Oxyacetylene Welding, Cutting, and Bracing. Topic number three, lecture discussion. Assembly of equipment and preparation for welding. The objective of this topic is to be able to properly and safely set up oxyacetylene equipment and to properly prepare for welding. It is important to follow a regular procedure for getting ready to weld, cut, or braze. This simple procedure includes gathering your equipment and materials, setting up the equipment, maintaining the equipment, making the proper adjustments, and shutting down the equipment. If you follow this procedure throughout your career as a welder, it will add to your efficiency and your safety. First of all, however, you must dress properly for safety and comfort, as outlined in Topic 2. Other necessary equipment includes a striker for lighting the torch, a set of tip cleaners, a steel wire brush, and a pair of pliers. Prior to setting up the equipment, carefully inspect and clean the working area. Then obtain the materials needed to prepare the workpieces for the scheduled job. Select the torch tip size recommended for the workpiece. Then select filler metal of the proper size and composition. All these items are listed in your workbook. Now you are ready to begin the equipment setup process. The procedure is as follows. Secure the gas cylinders so they cannot be upset and remove their protecting caps. Clear the passages on both the oxygen and acetylene cylinders by opening the valves slightly for a second or two. This will blow out any dirt that may prevent a gas tight connection. This is also done when a manifold system is used. Inspect both regulators and assure that the pressure adjusting screws are backed off. Check the threads to make sure they are clean and free of nicks. Then connect the acetylene pressure regulator to the cylinder or to the manifold connection, whichever is used. Do the same with the oxygen regulator. Turn the nuts down and tighten with the appropriate wrench for a gas tight seal. Do not over tighten. A wrist action like closing a water faucet is enough. Inspect the hose assembly. Make sure the fittings are clean and free of oil or grease. Attach them to the check valves on the regulators, red hose to acetylene and green hose to oxygen. Tighten firmly with the wrench, but not too tightly. Now inspect the torch threads. Clean them if necessary and attach them to the hose assembly. Inspect and attach the correct tip, making sure the threads are clean and free of nicks. Ensure that all connections are gas tight. Before opening up the main cylinder valves, make sure that the adjusting screws on the regulators are turned out counterclockwise. Don't turn them too far or they will come off. Open the valve slowly on the acetylene cylinder until the needle on the high pressure gauge stops moving. Then open the valve an additional half turn, no more. This allows fast closing of the cylinder if necessary. Repeat this procedure with the oxygen valve except that the valve should be opened completely since it is a double seating valve and is sealed only in the fully closed or open position. Now adjust the acetylene gas pressure to near the desired amount by turning the regulator handle inward. Then open the acetylene valve on the torch and adjust to the desired pressure, closing the valve afterwards. Repeat this procedure for the oxygen. With both pressures set, you are now ready to light the torch. First, open the acetylene torch valve 
one quarter turn and slightly open the oxygen valve. With a striker, light the torch. If the flame produces a lot of black soot, acetylene valve a little more. If the flame blows away from the tip, there is too much acetylene. Close the valve slightly. Now slowly open the oxygen valve until you see three distinct zones in the flame. A short bright tip called the inner cone, a feather-like flame somewhat longer, and a large flame enveloping both of them. This three-part flame is called a carburizing flame. To adjust for a neutral flame, open the oxygen valve gradually until the feather-like flame just disappears at the tip of the inner cone. This neutral flame is the one used for most fusion welding. If you continue opening the oxygen valve until the inner cone becomes darker, shorter, and sharper, you now have an oxidizing flame. You will have reason to use all three types of flame in this course and in your career as a welder. When using the carburizing flame, ensure that it is the right size. The size can be judged from the length of the carburizing feather flame in relation to the inner cone. For example, here is a 2x flame. The carburizing feather is twice as long as the inner cone. A 3x flame has the feather three times as long as the inner cone. Once you have adjusted the proper flame, you are ready to weld. To close down the equipment after welding, first close the acetylene valve on the torch to put out the flame. Then close the oxygen valve. Shut off both the oxygen and acetylene valves on the supply system. And then bleed the lines by opening the valves on the torch. Acetylene first, then oxygen. Close them both when the pressure is relieved. Then turn out the pressure adjusting screws on both regulators counterclockwise until you feel no more pressure. Gather up the hoses and hang them up or wrap them around the cylinders. Do not hang them on the regulators. Finally, clean up the work area. It is important that you follow this simple step-by-step -step procedure for ensuring the safe, proper use of the equipment.